try to use your original language. There is translation for English, Portuguese, and uh, Spanish so that the interpreter to make the interpreter's life easier. So if you speak Portuguese, uh, well, just speak your own language. So we'll understand each other through translation. A round of applause for Henry. So thank you for this uh, introduction, and I want to thank the Programs Committee for inviting me to be here. Um, the work that we uh, conducted at the Campinas University. This is uh, this is uh, the agenda for what I'm going to discuss today. The, uh, in the previous presentations by Sylvia and uh, the IPv6 panel, that was a good introduction. Um, as uh, so, and uh, the aim of my presentation is to share with you the need and uh, the urgency that we have to monitor your infra your. Uh, uh, dual stack uh, infrastructure networks and not just to deliver an IPv6 uh, con uh, uh, connection but uh, to continuously monitor um, the operation and and uh, reminding you that you should not neglect uh, the existing IPv6 traffic in our networks. And also, I'm also going to present some best practices that are very interesting and I'd like to add a comment. And it is that all of these tools and methods were developed under controlled uh, um, conditions uh, at the lab for educational purposes. And that is what I wanted to disclose. The previous uh, presentations before the coffee break were quite useful to understand that IPv6 at present is here in all uh, the devices of the event, and it is present in most uh, OSs and in the IoT devices. So today, in this era, we can no longer disable or turn IPv6 off in a network. So it's a, it's not an option, fortunately. The countries in our LACNIC region um, have already surpassed uh, the 50% uh, milestone. Euro, uh, Brazil, Uruguay, and Mexico have already surpassed uh, that uh, based on uh, Google and uh, APNIC Labs uh, uh, statistics. When I'm asked, when uh, they come and talk to me and and they say I I don't have IPv6 in my network, well that's a, that's an error. It's not the case. IPv6 is is actually in uh, the person's network and and it may be rather dangerous because uh, the person does not understand what IPv6 is in the network and and uh, the ISP is not integrating it in a global network. In local networks, for instance, it's very common with a very simple monitoring. It's very simple to realize with a TC, TCP dump or Wireshark or Netstat, the um, um, local um, is very often surpass the IPv4 transit in our network. So when somebody comes and asks, I tell them that uh, it's quite deceitful because actually IPv6 is already in their networks and it's a problem if they don't even realize that it that, that transit is there. So can we ignore the IPv6 traffic in the network? No, cyber criminals may hide and may, they may prefer to uh, stay behind an app, although some of them are learning about IPv6 and some botnet tools are also migrating and are getting adapted to IPv6. Unfortunately, many honeypots uh, do not uh, are not configured to collect uh, IPv6 data and uh, there are some uh, 
uh, intelligence uh, and uh, threats uh, uh, um, intelligence that uh, do st still ignore IPv6 in the report, and that's that's uh, serious because we conclude that there is an invisible traffic that we shouldn't neglect. We should uh, deal with it in urgently. What are the risks of ignoring that IPv6 is in your network? Let me give you three hands-on practices, uh, examples of risks that we may suffer in our networks when we're not paying attention to IPv6 traffic overall. In most blockades, uh, they're all on IPv4. They're more robust than IPv6. When I run the two protocols in the same network, now with um, a simple and map in uh, uh, and in our network, um, somebody can uh, do spam in IPv4 and discover that an IPv6 there's an IPv6 address in that same device, and from that uh, IPv6 address will move laterally within uh, the network, trying to um, uh, ex exploit. Uh, that in uh, and uh, to interfere with um, the internal network. Here we have the three uh, practical examples, very quickly, of situations that may occur in a network when we don't monitor the IPv6 traffic and we don't pay attention to it. The first one is the creation of a uh, automated tunnels that are created in uh, Windows when there's when uh, there's no delivery of a uh, local uh, address when windows checks that uh, that address is not uh, delivered to promote the use uh, of uh, ipv6 it generates that automatic uh, tunnel that can be a problem for the user because they end up adding a standard route that is longer with uh, a longer delay and that's a terrible experience for the user the second case, which is also quite interesting and which I will expand on further, is when there are leaks of non-monitored networks. This occurs when you have a tunnel or a secret channel. That secret channel was not authorized by the user and that is done intentionally. As a result, you have data leak through that secret channel. It's very difficult to detect because these covert channels use legitimate protocols and ports, and these up and it become released in our network. So these filtering techniques can be exploited by info stealers. There is a paper an article that was published in LACNIC's blog, written by Guy Germa and Graciela, that speak more about info stealers. This example over here on data leaks was done through this protocol ICMP v6. This is quite effective because we normally monitor the top layers and the network later is somehow more relaxed, we can say. So the data leak occurs without the user knowing this. This is a screenshot at the top of a ping of a normal ICMP packet done with a 32 byte. This was captured by Wireshark and at the bottom we have a data leak where through the ICPM v6 protocol. This was transferred without knowledge and authorization of the user. They transferred this screen, this table without authorization of the user. This is a 24 byte packet and this is not at all normal for an ICMPv6 protocol. This slide over here shows how easy it is to have that data leak, just one line can include a command to do filtering of any type of information without the user realizing how this is executed through a malware, through phishing, which is applied 
So the user clicks there, and that malware produces that filtering when we do not monitor the network traffic. Below, we have a mitigation of this problem using flows in the network flows is a network is a, sorry a tool that we should all use to monitor our network through the flows and the networks we can detect the anomalous behavior this is data exfiltering of the icmp protocol and in red we highlighted many more bytes than what we should really have Another type of data filtering that is part of the protocol IPv6 occurs through the flow label field. This is a new field in IPv6. And the tool IPv6 Teal allows to build a secret channel that allows filtering data through that field. This is a legitimate field. Many tools do not monitor this, so this provides an opportunity to uh, hackers to produce data leaks in the user's network. Here at the top, we have an example of a Python tool producing that data leak of this password file. And below, in Wireshark, we have the screenshot of that data leak related to the flow label field. And the third type of example is when a router advi advertisement that is not authorized because all the devices are ready to receive an IPv6 address, a router, an unauthorized router advertisement might change the performance and the behavior of a network. So as soon as we prepare IPv6 to deliver all authentic, legitimate router advertising, this will contribute to not receiving these unauthorized RAs. Imagine a network where I don't have IPv6, but all the devices are capable of receiving this address. So an attacker might be announcing a route, and because the, all, all the operational systems by default can talk with IPv6, the managed to obtain the IPv6 address from the email addresses and so on. So the traffic begins to be executed in IPv6 with the risk of affecting all the security policies. So that is a very poor experience for the users. So how does this occur of an unauthorized RA? This can be occur intentionally or also can be the result of a misconfiguration. In LACNIC 41, Ernesto made a presentation that you can check on how to mitigate this problem using controls such as RA guard to prevent the dissemination of unauthorized RAs. Some suggestions, when I have an IPv6 only data center, the fixed IPs, in most cases we have fixed IPs. So this is in an IPv6 centers, and also with the end-to-end -end links. I don't have to have RA announcements for those end-to-end -end links. So we have to analyze the real need of using router advertising in those data centers or IPv6 only. Now, regarding the best practices, we always have to monitor, monitor the outbound traffic standard. Very often we monitor inbound traffic, but we don't control outbound traffic as carefully. Using flows tools, we can monitor the frequency and the amount of data that go out of a network. We have to install adequate technical controls to train users and where they feel tempted to click uh, on a malicious link. This is how phishing occurs, and this phishing brings malware uh, 
and as a result, you can have data leaks. And of course, identity access management is essential in order to provide access to users. So only allowing users to manage what they can really use. So to conclude, we realized that integrating and monitoring IPv6 should not be neglected. We sh should never disable IPv6. That is very important, and we really have to fight against that at all moment because we really have to fight against that at all times. We also have to adequately prepare the devices in order to do dual stack network management. This is what we now need, and very much so, in fact. Once again, we have to ignore IPv6 in our networks. To ignore IPv6 in the networks really jeopardizes the entire infrastructure. We really need to complete the transition stage that we are experiencing. We are in a moment of transition. We cannot just sit back and relax. The objective is to reach the end of the road, namely to complete the transition so that we can only use IPv6 in our networks and at the same, same time allow IPv4 to gradually disappear, and hopefully that will be soon. So thank you very much once again, Jorge and all the program committee for accepting my paper. These are my contact details and also APNESOS, and I'm happy to take any questions, whether in person or remotely. It will be a pleasure to answer the questions. Thank you. So that was very interesting. Henry, we have time for one question. Any questions for Henry? Questions? If nobody has any questions for Henry, or if you think of questions later on, you will find him. So a big round of applause for Henry.